Welcome to part two in a video series that focuses on helically scanned digital audio tape formats. Sony's professional grade transports have two separate reel motors, eliminating wear item parts such as belts and clutches found in consumer grade transports. And while they should be more mechanically reliable, Sony's older precision tape guide design can't hold an alignment. This is one reason that some of the tapes you are trying to archive will be out of spec. When a DAT is inserted, the tape is pulled from the cassette, threaded around the head drum, and we hope the machine can pull the tape, read the time code, and output anything but this dreaded sound. You already know the importance of manually cleaning the heads and fast winding the tape, sometimes multiple times. This video is about tape path alignment, the video equivalent of azimuth, using two versions of the user-friendly decks made by Pioneer, the Fostex D5 and the Tascam DA20. To adjust tape path, an oscilloscope is connected to the appropriate test points so that the RF envelope can be observed and, if necessary, optimized via the entrance and exit post rollers, otherwise known as tape guides. Unlike Sony's tape guides, the Pioneer guides have no locking screws, so it's easier to get started. The test points are on a header, rerouted to the rear panel for ease of connection, either for monitoring with the lid on or calibration. A support bracket is removed and then set aside to allow easy access to the tape path adjustments. The right arrow points to the exit guide. The hole above the left arrow is added for easier access to the entrance guide. A modified screwdriver is used to adjust the guides. The entrance guide affects the left side of the RF envelope, while the exit guide affects the right side of the envelope. Let's now revisit that nasty sound at the head of this video. A 40 Hz tone has been recorded and monitored at barely audible levels so that it's not annoying unless the signal quality is beyond error correction. Notice how deformed the waveform can be without signal interruption. No matter what you think of the DAT format, the error correction is very robust. An oscilloscope's view of the RF envelope is essential to understanding the integrity of the signal from tape. Oscilloscopes are like recording consoles and workstations. They all do the same thing, but not exactly in the same way. In lieu of having an experienced tech on hand to guide you through the process, here is a quick tutorial. The Vertical Amp. The RF envelope is connected to scope channel 1, and the head switching pulse is connected to scope channel 2. Adjust the height of the waveform via the controls labeled volts per division. Adjust the position of each waveform via the two pots at the top of the vertical amplifier. Note that the RF signal requires a short, low capacitance cable or a test probe set to times 10. While it is not necessary to view the head switching square wave, the scope uses it as a trigger. At the top right of the screen, notice the channel 2 is the trigger source. The rate at which the oscilloscope screen is scanned is adjusted by the horizontal sweep rate, labeled seconds per division. This adjusts the width of the wave. Three manufacturers design transports that use the capstan motor to drive the reel tables. Panasonic, covered in video 1, Pioneer, detailed in the first half of this video, and Alps, who OEM the transport found in the DA30 Mark II, DA40, DA45HR, DA302, and the DAP1 portable. All use the same 30 mm head drum, the only difference being the loading mechanism. On the underside, many of you are familiar with the most common failure, a stretched threading belt, and while we're here, note the location of the head drum motor as well as the belt that links the capstan motor to the reversing idler. Topside, there are two issues worth pointing out. 
Note the location of the supply and take up brake pads. These either disintegrate or fall off. The double arrow points out the reversing either pivot assembly. Notice the unintentional space at the top where the plastic is cracked. This will eventually cause problems during fast wind. That said, both problems can be repaired. Archivists are already aware of the most common DAT issues. I've chosen a handful of models that are inherently reliable and their known issues repairable. The common failures with Sony, Panasonic, and Tascam's Alps transports are assemblies that are press fit and held together by friction. Sony's metal-on-metal -metal tape guides come loose and make out-of-spec tapes. And while Panasonic's cast deck plate is beautifully machined, the base of the exit guide is machined brass, press fit into a spring-loaded plastic pivot arm. The plastic cracks, the brass catches on a deck plate and flings the tape into the playback amplifier where it can get tangled on the components. Surprisingly, the Alps transport used by Tascam has a deck plate made from a molded plastic resin. Far cheaper to manufacture than Panasonic's deck plate, but the design is more reliable, and it has to be, because the DA45HR is the only 24-bit model. Pioneer-made transports are perhaps the least known and the most reliable so far. Finally, observing tape path via scope will help archivists understand whether they are fighting alignment or tape degradation. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.